Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is a beautiful prayer of David, and we don't know exactly the circumstances of this trouble that he was in. He was in trouble a lot during his life, and it's obvious some people are out to get him yet again. But his heart is pointed in one direction, and that is to God alone. He asked God to incline his ear. It's the image of a parent stooping down to listen to their child. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. David begins not from a place of saying, look what I have done, therefore you owe me something, but I am poor and needy. It is, uh, it's reminiscent of what Jesus said at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. David knew that he brought nothing to God except for his sinfulness and his need, and he throws himself on God's mercy. And then he says this, preserve my life for I am godly. And the question immediately pops into our heads, well, how can he be humble and poor in spirit if he's calling himself godly? And what we have to understand is that in this context, the word godly does not mean that David thought he was perfect, but he did mean that his life, that he sought in his life to be God-directed. He was continually having to make course corrections because he wandered off course, we know that. But he was referred to in scripture as the man after God's own heart because he continually sought the face of the Lord when he was in trouble, when he was in need. And he knew that his life and all his hope came from God alone. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. You are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. You know, God's mercy is over everything that he has made, but his direct help is only available to those who ask for it. And sometimes we don't ask for help because we think God is too busy or we think our problems are too small, or perhaps we think that our sinfulness has turned God away from us and he won't listen to our prayers. We need to understand that God is always ready to uh, be with us, to listen to us, and to come to our aid. David just exults in who God is. There's none like you among the gods. And though we know that there is no God but the Lord God, there are other things in our lives. And there were certainly other gods that were worshiped in David's day. But there are gods that are worshiped in our day gods of power and money and success and pleasure. All of these things can be little gods that take the place of the one true God. 
And we have to be like David. We have to pursue God alone. He says, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. None of us know the way to walk in instinctively. We have to be taught and we have to walk in the truth. We are bound to the truth through our faith in Christ. And it is only that the truth, as Jesus said, that will set us free. And then he says this, unite my heart to fear your name. Some translations put it this way, give me an undivided heart to fear your name. And that's a beautiful image. You know, our hearts turn in a thousand different directions, chasing after all those other little gods that get in the way. But our heart, when it is united in the pursuit of God, when it is united in the pursuit of God's glory above all things, that is what leads us in the proper way. He says, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart and will glorify your name forever. This is where the secret to our joy is found. It's like that first question from the Westminster Shorter Catechism. What is the chief end of man? Why are we here? And the answer, to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Our purpose is to glorify God. And we can't do that with a divided heart. And the secret to our happiness is that when we glorify God first, then we will find our true joy, our true delight, our true peace in Him. Everything else in our lives, even if they're falling apart, will fall into place if our hearts are united, undivided. And again, to fear God's name means to show respect for who He is, to have the proper awe and reverence for Him as the Lord God. And then David says, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This is a direct quote from the book of Exodus in the 34th chapter, I believe, where God reveals himself to Moses and describes himself with these words, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. David knew his Bible and he knew God from experience and this is where we live we have the Word of God and we have our experience of God that guides us into the ways of God and we have to continually turn back to God as we try to make sure that our hearts are undivided turn to me and be gracious to me give strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant show me a sign of your favor it is not wrong to ask God to show us his favor. God desires to bless us, but what we have to do is be prepared to accept the blessing he offers and not have some predetermined blessing in our head that God must give us. God is free and he is sovereign, but he is good and he is merciful and he is gracious. Whatever is on your heart this day or whatever trouble you're going through, you can turn to him, you can seek to be godly to be god directed in all of your ways and this is where you will find your true joy and your true peace god's blessings be upon you this day